Hello guys, I hope you all are having a great day. My name is Amaros and today we will be talking about a really interesting topic that is PC or console. Which gaming is the best? So in this video, I am going to cover everything about PC versus console gaming. So firstly, we will be looking at the specifications and the hardware. Then we will talk about the differences and similarities in the comparison section of the video. And lastly, we will decide which is the best for gaming and other purposes. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the video. Starting off, let's see the specifications. First of all, we are going to be talking about the components used. I am going to use the PS4 Pro which is the base model for the next generation consoles and the Xbox One which is also a base model for the next generation consoles. And for the PC, I am going with the average $400 custom PC. So let's first take a look at the PC specs. The average $400 PC has a quad core CPU which in our case is the AMD Ryzen 3 1200 which is clocked at 3.1 GHz and can be turbo boosted to 3.4 GHz and has a GTX 1050 with 8 GB of DDR4 RAM which is clocked at 24 MHz whereas a console like the PS4 Pro has a single custom chip processor which in our case is the AMD Jaguar which has a 64-bit interference and the GPU can have an output of about 1.84 dial flops and in this case our GPU is the AMD Radeon based graphics engine. So for the memory the PS4 has the GDDR5 8GB and the storage it has 500GB and the second version has the 1TB. And an average Xbox One has 8GB DDR3 RAM which is clocked at 2133 GHz and has a 32MB ES RAM and contains an additional 8GB of flash memory. The CPU that the Xbox One has is an AMD custom CPU with 8 cores and it is clocked at 1.7 GHz whereas the GPU has a clock speed of 853 MHz which is originally 800 MHz and it can be boosted up to 853 MHz it has 768 shader cores and the teraflop is about 1.31 so looking at the specifications we can now compare the both sides so the Xbox One and the PlayStation have an AMD based processor similar to the PC but they have a custom one and the PC has the AMD Ryzen 3 1200. So the PC is a quad core processor with 3.1 GHz of clock speed which can be turbo boosted to 3.4 GHz whereas the consoles they have 8 cores but the clock speed is really low which is about 1.7 GHz to 1.9 GHz so it really makes a difference in the performance so in the CPU case the PC is a clear winner moving on to the graphics we can see that the GPU and their clock speeds is about 800 MHz to about 1000 MHz whereas the GTX 1050 2GB graphics card has a clock speed of about 1000 MHz and can which can be boosted to 12.50 MHz and you can also overclock the graphics card which were, could also be done with the CPU in the PC case but in the console case no overclocking is allowed as CPU and the GPU are both locked so in again the, in the GPU side the PC wins as it performs better than the consoles now coming at the memory the memory in the Xbox One and the PS4 has a great difference as the PS4 contains the GDDR5 8GB RAM and the Xbox contains the outdated 8GB DDR3 memory which is has a really good clock speed by the way which is 200, 2133 MHz and it also contains an additional 8GB flash memory which cannot be used as a RAM but helps a lot in some small stuff and other little comparisons so looking at the memory in the pc we have the 8gb ddr4 memory which leads to the conclusion that in the memory section both perform really well and both sides could not be better than the other and so it leads to a drop so as you can see in the specifications corner the pc ousted the console by 2 nil. so now coming to to the conclusion we will have some benchmarks on the screen so we can look at them 
So from the benchmarks we can see that the benchmarks for the PC vary a lot in the games. For example, Overwatch on the PC has an average of 74 FPS whereas PUBG on the PC has about 23 FPS, a really big margin. But this all also depends on the CPU and the GPU as on the console side the GPU and the CPU are equally placed and have equal clock speeds whereas on the PC they can vary from their age and their usability and how roughly they were used and how were they used and some other features <coughs> so for the PC the benchmarks matter a lot and have a really great margin while looking on the PlayStation and the Xbox one side we don't need any benchmarks as all the games are logged at 60 fps which means that the maximum fps that any game can reach on xbox or playstation is 60 it can decrease but it cannot increase even about 0.1 fps from 60 it can decrease to like say 50 fps 40 fps and it can even go to 0 fps which means it varies from 0 to 60 fps on both consoles which leads in the conclusion if we are playing Battlefield 1 which has an average FPS of 61 and which can go to the max of 75 FPS on console we will be only able to get 60 FPS locked on Battlefield 1 and when there is more action it will decrease and when there is no action it will be locked at 60 FPS and won't increase. Another, another game that is CSGO which is a really popular eSports title gives us an average of about 103 FPS which is really great on PC but if we are playing it that on console we will only get 60 FPS locked. It will decrease but these types of games don't affect the console very much so it will be locked at 60 fps which means that on a console the gamer has a limited experience if he cannot tweak the settings he cannot change the definition of the video whereas on the PC we can change the definitions from low, medium, high, even ultra on the games that will allow it and on the console there is only like uh, graphics quality low, medium, high you cannot turn on or off the shadows, the texture qualities and etc etc like the game The Witcher 3 performs better on the PC than the console because on the PC it crosses the 60 FPS marks and it can run whereas on the console it is locked at 60 FPS and the FPS only decreases which does not provide the gamer a very good and <coughs> successful gaming experience and the gamer is locked at 60 FPS. So this leads us to the conclusion which is really simple PC outstrips the consoles but wait the console can also perform better than the PC in some cases. As you can see, the gaming performance is locked at 60 FPS. No matter what are you do, what you were doing before, what you were playing before, what are you doing with the game, the experience is locked at 60 FPS. Whereas if we look at the PC side, if you are running the Photoshop, the Premiere Pro, and the After Effects, and some other heavy uses programs, and we are also playing at the game, it will affect the F FPS in a really great margin. For example, if I only play Battlefield 1 and all of the programs are closed, I get about an average FPS of 75. But if I turn on the Photoshop and start uh, some photo editing, and also run the Premiere Pro and the After Effects, and start running something, and when they are rendering, I am playing Battlefield 1, it will barely give me about a 20 FPS. So as you can see, there's a great margin. But if uh, on the console side, we can do anything as it is locked at 60 fps which will not affect your real gaming performance but in some cases the pc is still better than the console like the console can only play games you can use a little bit of facebook twitch and youtube and but you cannot really do some professional editing there is a built-in editor in both the console but it is not as better as the premiere pro or the after effects or even the final cut pro which comes in the mac so this leads us that the PC can do a hundred other things or you can say a thousand other things with gaming than the console which can only do gaming and a little bit of other stuff like talking to your friends in Facebook and YouTube and that's all. Whereas on the PC, console, PC sorry, you can surf the internet, you can download different programs, you can download the modded versions of games, 
you can also download pirated games which i would not recommend but you can do so so basically we can see that pc is better than console but another advantage of console is that it is really portable that you only need to take a box with you anywhere and then you can just plug it into the tv or the monitor and start playing whereas the pc it is really bulky the parts are spread it out it needs a lot of cable which does not mean that if you are a traveler you can take and travel it as it would really disturb you and would destroy your traveling experience so it's up to you which one you prefer the console side has also many advantages and it suits your need basically if you are staying at home and you don't go so much uh, here and there and you need a really customizable gaming experience and need to do other stuff as well like editing school projects and etc etc pc is the best for you console will not help you a lot but if you're just looking to sit on the couch relax back take your controller and just start playing games at the constant fps and don't worry about other programs then console gaming is the best and if you also travel more then console console will really help you. so this round up rounds up today's video guys i hope you really enjoyed it and i really love the support that you have given me these days as you can see we have reached about 13 subscribers and our first milestone is 50 subscribers and i will be going to make a special video when we reach the mark so this is all for today's video i hope you get the answer which is better pc or console it basically just depends on your need and which need suits you so uh, it's my name is amaros and i'm signing out and i will see you in the next one and stay tuned for some awesome episodes and keep tapping bye bye